Well, we have a children's director, and her name, her name is Angie. There she is back here. Angie Moore and her husband, Jake. She just sailed right through the vetting process, and so we offered her the position, and, and she took it. Let's pray for her and Jake as they uh, take a step into this new place of leadership. Lord Jesus, I thank you that as we go to higher levels, you give us a greater anointing. And so, uh, Lord, we just are excited to just watch them step into that anointing and to walk in an assurance that they are being the ones being called that Angie is the one being called for this position and her and Jake are going to faithfully serve there and and we thank you for them and we and we agree as a congregation to support them in this very 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 important ministry of helping form the hearts of our children to Jesus Christ Lord, bless them. Continue to pour your anointing out on them. Help them find um, the correct answers to their problems as they learn how to serve at this capacity. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thanks, Angie. <laughs> um, if, if you've ever wanted to serve in a great ministry, children's ministry is a fantastic place to start. So you can get a hold of Angie, and she will direct you as she uh, continues to grow that ministry. Well, good morning. My name's Tom, and I am so glad that you are here. And I think this is a great way to start your week. Think about it. We hit the pause button. We sh hopefully, we shut off all social media and stuff like that. And we, you know, there's no TVs in here, right? We hit the pause button on our life, we come together with other believers. We worship God in song. And then we hear, hear the word of the Lord from the scripture. I, I, just, this is a, I can think of no better way for you to start your week than what you're doing right now, both in-house and online as you're watching online. So, Lord Jesus, we just invite you to speak to us today. We open our hearts to you to hear your word today. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Well, you're, you're probably wondering why I'm so dressed up today, and it's not only to look good, and I look good. Wait, why are you guys laughing? That's not, that was not a joke. This is my, <laughs> and Doug, I'm not going to tell him you beat me at golf two days ago, so quit bringing it up. <laughs> I am, this is the Sioux, in January when I get back from Uganda, usually Macy's has a sale, so I buy a $100 suit at Macy's, wear it a half a dozen times during the year, and then I, I wear it. They ask us to wear a suit in the leadership conference that uh, Pastor Andrew, Luke, and I are going to go um, teach at in early January, and then I just leave this suit over there for some pastor who will never get to probably buy a new suit. And so they're blessed. And then I come home and buy a new suit again for 100 bucks at Macy's. So um, that's what this is about. And today I want to cast a little vision for you. When we go over there, and when the team goes over there, we love to take a gifts to all the orphans and the mamas. Well, that's about 180 gifts. And Pastor Andrew and I, we're not going to pay for all those gifts. So we, we want to encourage you guys, if you, especially if you sponsor an orphan, I would encourage you set some Christmas money back. You know, treat them as one of your family. Whatever you spend on your kids or your relatives, uh, set a little money aside, and then send it uh, into the office. To and Stephanie will put that in account. We'll take that money with us to Uganda because we tried to take the gifts one year and it was a crazy amount of extra expense on luggage. So we learned to buy the gifts over there. Also for the mamas, we, oh, I was going to bring one of those gallon bags. Jake, are there gallon bags of the mamas on the info center? Um, what we like to do for the mamas, there's 16 mamas, a couple extras that do different things. So we're going to, we have a, a, this gallon bag here. <laughs> Pretend I have a gallon bag. They can edit this, Photoshop, all this. 
but uh, this gallon bag, there's a list of different items to put inside the bag. And, uh, and then the biggie is we ask you to put 50 bucks in there. And for some of you, you're like, oh, no problem. I'll put 50 bucks in, in that. And there's only 20 bags that we're asking people to fill for the mamas. And um, so they're at the information center. And on your way out, if, if you want to do that, you go ahead and uh, grab one of those bags on your way out. There's a list of who grabbed whose bag. So make sure you sign that list and you put stuff in here, fingernail clippers and razors and deodorant and try to fit it all in that bag because luggage is, a, is an issue for us as we travel over there. Does that sound good? Amen. Good. You guys want to provide for the widows and orphans? Amen. Seems like a good idea to me. Well, I'm a strategic thinker. So when um, going through life, a lot of times I'm trying to def define what the problem is and then uh, list the d solutions for the problem and then try to choose the best prob uh, possible solution. And then I set goals and objectives and figure out strategies and then plans and tactical plans. And then I monitor compliance. So that's the way my brain works. Well, as I'm thinking of some things to say this month in November, what I came up with is, uh, is what I believe the word of the Lord is for us is what can we do to be winners at life? So for the next three weeks, that what, that's what we're going to be telling you is how to win in life. And this series really is, is geared more toward Christians. Now, if you're a non-believer, you're still going to get things out of these messages. But most of the time, I'm, well, yeah, most of the time I'm going to be assuming you've already made a commitment to Jesus. So uh, for those in-house and those watching online, I want to let you know, that, and I'll give you a guarantee, if you listen to what I'm saying, and then you apply it to your life, and you actually do what I'm saying, I guarantee that your life will be better in weeks to come, the, the next week. And that's always been my goal, is to give you something on Sunday that if you apply it to your life, if you obey it, then your life is going to be better. Now, I do want to give you a heads up for December. In December, as we're putting together the series, it is going to be very applicable. It's going to be uh, people that are not Christ followers, or I think they're going to, even people that are hostile toward Christianity, I think these messages that I'm going to be preaching in December are, are going to be good messages. You'll want to invite your unsaved, unchurched people and let me say something else also about sharing things on social media. If, if you're listening to this message in-house or online and you're like, wow, that's really good, share it on social media. That is, uh, that is today's evangelism as well as talking to people and sharing Jesus with friends and family. But online is a great place to sh talk about Jesus unless you're a secret service Christian. So uh, don't be shy, share stuff on, online. Only if, only if it connects with you. I mean, if it doesn't connect with you, don't, don't worry about it. But if you're like, wow, that was really good, I needed to hear that, share it, don't, don't be selfish. So last week, Pastor Andrew said, at least first service I know he said, the second service I was fixing lunch for the staff meeting we had after second service. But first service, he said this, he said, the longer we follow Christ, the sweeter we should become. You guys remember that? Yeah. yeah. Now, unfortunately, the opposite of that sometimes is true. And the longer we follow Christ, the more fussy we get or the more critical we get or the more political we get or the more divisive we get. But as maturing believers as Christ, as we mature, the more we mature, the more we should become like Jesus. So the more kind we should be, the more loving, the more gracious, the more life-giving we should be. Are you? I was... I was, uh, how many of you were here two weeks ago? Okay, okay. I was teaching a couple weeks ago about the, the four core programming things, and those were every human is created in God's image, Jesus rose from the dead, the Bible is God's word, and I'm an alien. Are you guys tracking with me? Go ahead and turn to your neighbor and say, I'm tracking with him, are you? 
Those of you online, go ahead and type in. I'm tracking with you, Pastor Tom. How do you spell Pastor? Anyway, okay, so uh, <clears throat> all of my grandkids are out of diapers. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> and I'll tell you why, thank you, Jesus, because what would happen, I'm sure my daughters were feeding them high fibrous food, and then they'd bring them over to the house, and they'd say, hey, Dad, could you watch the kids for a moment? We're going to run down to the store. And I'm like, well, sure, I'll watch the kids, no problem. As soon as they left the house, Bam! Baby, go poo poo. <laughs> now, I don't know if you know this, I'm pretty sure it's in the Bible. But Papa is the last guy on the poopy diaper changing list. And all the grandpas said, Amen. <laughs> yeah. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. We have a quorum. Okay, but you know, so anyway, daughter goes to the store and I smell it, and I'm like, Oh, no. And so, so you do that, pull out the back of the diaper thing, and look in there, of course. Yep, it's full. Now, what if I did this? What if I were to go uh, grab the diaper and uh, just wrap, just get a brand new diaper, brand new diaper, not soiled at all, still dry. Just wrap it around the old diaper, okay? Hey, you know, it probably, it's probably going to look good, right? But is it really going to do any good at all? No, of course not. It's not going to do any good. What do you got to do? First, what you have to do, you have to take off the old one, uh, get the wipes. <laughs> thank Jesus for wipes. I remember the first diaper I... Uh, thank Jesus for wipes. And you, and you clean that up, and then you put the, then you put the new diaper on. You, is everybody tracking with me? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So you got to... Take off the old. Go ahead and turn to your neighbor and say, take off the old. The, the, those, those online, you could comment in the comment, take off the old. And that's what you have to do. You have to take off the old, and then you put on the new. This is Ephesians. <laughs> this is Ephesians chapter 4. We're starting in verse, sir, I'm starting in verse 17. It says, so I tell you this and insist on it in the Lord that you must no longer live as the Gentiles. Now, this is Paul talking to the church at Ephesus. And when he uses the, what they would think of, or what we, that similar to what the Jews would be think, the Jewish Christians would be thinking about when Paul used that phrase Gentiles, for us, it would be those, those dirty, rotten sinners that don't know Jesus. That's pretty much. So um, that you must no longer live as sinners do, un, you know, unsaved sinners do in, and, and then he, look, look what he says as the first definer of what those, those, un, those unchurched or unsaved sinners are in the futility of their thinking. It's the first place that he identifies them that it's, it's a, it's in the mind thing. They are darkened in their understanding and separated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them due to the hardening of their heart. Now, I believe this is talking about the, the, the heart as the center of our, uh, we might say, worldview. It's the, uh, the heart is the, uh, the core. A few couple weeks ago, I was talking about that core belief system and the, their they're on autopilot. The, their hearts are, are so hardened or their beliefs of what they believe. This is what, this is what I believe. This is the way my dad believed. This is what grandpa believed. And I believe this is just the way that it is. And their hearts are so hardened, they, they cannot think anything different. And it says that, and when we do this, we lose all sensitivity and we give themselves over to sensuality so as to indulge in every kind of impurity and they are full of greed. So we, when we get stuck in our thinking, and it's, you know, as Gentiles, it's, it's uh, futile. Uh, it, it, our thinking is wrong. It's messed up. That leads to a place where we're just going to be greedy. Uh, I'm right, and you're wrong. 
Verse 20 says, that, however, is not the way of life you learned when you heard about Christ and were taught in him in accordance with the truth that is in Jesus. You were taught with regard to the former way of life, put off the, to, to just put off your old self. Turn to your neighbor and say, put off your old self. Put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires to be made new in the attitude of your minds. See, it's a mind thing. The, this issue is in our mind. It's in the way of our thinking. And then put on the new self, created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. When I was about right around six years old, we lived in Salem, Oregon on 19th place. And one evening, my dad asked my brother, he's 12 years old at the time, and he, he told him, he said, come on, I'm going to teach you how to chop wood. And I said, Dad, can I go with you? And my dad said, sure. So we get out there, and my dad's going to teach my brother how to chop wood with a double-headed axe. Well, I wanted to get in the best place to, to view what's going on, so I stood right in front of my brother just on the other side of the chopping block. And my dad snapped at me. You ever stand in front of somebody with the, the axe? What if the axe slips out and it's going to impale you or the head of the axe comes off? And, you know, so I was, you know, I thought, well, I, if, I, if I'm going to get hurt here, I'm going to get as far as I, away as I could. So I went and stood behind my brother. <laughs> I got snapped at again. You never stand behind anybody chopping wood. It's a double-headed axe. When he pulls that back, he can't see. It's going to hit you right in the, split you right down the middle. I said, stand over here on the side. So then I stood over there on the side and watched him teach my brother how to chop wood with a double-headed axe. And after a while, I asked my dad, I said, can I try it? And he said, no. Now, he probably said something after that, but all I heard was no. And I was hurt, okay? And where we were chopping wood outside there on the patio type area, and, and so I was hurt. And I remember walking back in the house, and there was kind of this dark hallway. And while I was walking in that dark hallway, the hurt whisperer came to me. I don't know if you realize there's a hurt whisperer, but there is. And the hurt whisperer comes to you when, when you're hurt. And the hurt whisperer, he only lies. That's what the hurt whisperer does. He'll lie to you. And the hurt whisperer came to me on that late afternoon day. And the hurt whisperer told me, he said, your dad loves your brother more than your dad loves you. And I, I remember thinking that probably for 25 years I carried that that lie around in my in my soul or in my operating system in my belief system whatever you want to call it and my heart even hardened over time as if the passage of scripture that we read in Ephesians and I was filtering life through that lie that the hurt whisperer gave me and we were a church going family so my, I probably heard a thousand Jesus loves you messages over the years as we were going to church. Many, many times God the Father loves you. Stuff like if you were the only person on the earth, Jesus would come to die for you. Those type of messages. And I remember hearing those messages and, 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 wanting, to be, and, and, and wanting to believe that truth. You know, but essentially what I was doing... I was putting a new diaper over the poopy diaper. Metaphorically, that's what I was doing in my life because I continue to have that lie inside of me that my dad loved my brother more than he loved me. Heck, I didn't even know. I couldn't even, for those 25 years that I was carrying that around, I didn't even know I was believing a lie. But guys, if we're going to be winners in life, and I want us to be winners in life, we have got to be able to identify and take off 
the old and, and put on the new truth. If, if, we, if we're going to be winners in life, we have to be able to identify those lies in our life. And I hope at this point of the message, I hope that you're kind of asking yourself, wow, could it be possible that I still have lies that are in my operating system and I'm, I'm wondering if maybe I still have been trying to put on new things and I haven't been taking off the old things and, and that's why I have s some stinking thinking in my life. <laughs> Did you get that? The dirty diaper, the stinking thinking. Thank you. This is a whole nother level of hu humor right there. So some people may not have got that. In the Pure Desire curriculum, which Pure Desire is a, a ministry that helps people be pure in their sexuality. Who wants to be pure in your sexuality? I figured some people wouldn't raise their hand. They're like, wait a second, am I admitting to being impure in my sexuality? But really, we should all raise our hands, no matter where you're at. We all should want to be pure in our sexuality. That's what that ministry is about. And they use this, this teaching aid. It's called the Noose of Sexual Addiction. And, and you can, I've seen other things for other types of addiction too. So you can use this as in, in many different ways. But that, that top box, it says the, the addictive mindset. And there's some destructive core concepts that they put in there. And, and I would say these are lies destructive core concepts are, are quite similar, but three of those that are listed would be that we feel worthless, we feel unlovable, and we feel alone. Now, if you're a Christ follower, I know many of your stories in this room, so many of you are Christ followers. I know that. But if you have feelings of worthlessness or unlovableness or aloneness, this points to the fact that you still are carrying around a lie in your soul because in Jesus, we have worth. Jesus said, I'll never leave you or, or forsake you. As a Christian, you, I almost said you can't. It's not true. You shouldn't feel alone as a Christian. And, and if you don't feel loved, that's not true either. In Christ, he really loves you. So uh, these are some indicators that are pointing in the direction that um, there is a lie that you are believing. Then it also, another one of the boxes, give the addictive root. And, um, th you know, that's answering the question, well, where do these lies come from? Family dysfunctions. And that's uh, my main, and one of my main lies came from family dysfunction, personal trauma, and addictive society. So um, those are the different areas that the lies come from, our family of origin or, or personal trauma, and we live in a fallen world. So if we're going to not be jerks, if we're going to get sweeter every year, if we're going to win at life, guys, we've got to be able... Um, we've got to be willing to spend some time to identify the lies that are still on the inside of us, identify some of those lies that are still, that we're still using and to, um, in our belief system to, to look at the world and, and see what's out there. We're filtering things through that. We need to take off those lies and then put on the, the new truths, the new truths that are in the Bible. So how, how does that happen? How do we do that? How do we identify those lies? Well, the, I would, obviously, the first place that we start is we pray and we say, Holy Spirit, I need your help. Holy Spirit, help me to identify the lie that I'm believing inside of me. And, and, and that's a great place to start. But uh, some places that I've found that have helped me, I was just... <laughs> I just went to my bookshelf and I had no idea that I was this messed up. <laughs> but these are all the different curriculums that I went through over the years. And the first one, back then it was called Four Men Only, but this is the Pure Desire, Pure Desire curriculum. In this curriculum, 
they start digging around in your soul. And it was in this curriculum that I figured out the lie that my, my dad loved my brother more than he loved me. I, uh, that's, that's the curriculum that I was going through when I figured out that lie. Here's another one. I don't know if you guys remember men's fraternity. We dug around the soul in men's frat, and we talked about the father wound. You guys know that uh, the research shows that all of us, because we live in a fallen world, everybody comes out of their family of origin with some level of PTSD. Okay, we all, we all come out of our family of origin with some stuff. And 80% of the time, it's a father's wound. And in this book, Men's Frat, we talked about father's wounds and overly bonded mother's wounds in that curriculum. And then we went to... Uh, the executive team and I went through healing the wounds of the heart with Jack Frost. And he would always say love instead of love. So that's, we'd make fun of him. But we dug around our soul in that one. This one, now this one, beyond tolerable recovery. And this one, I learned uh, what's called theophostics. Now it was in this, look at the thickness of that book. It's in this curriculum that they, they helped me uh, to find out what it was that I was supposed to do when I found out that lie inside of me. And then, and I'll talk about that in a moment. This one changes that heal. We went through this on Sunday nights when we were on the other side. Many of, uh, many of you did that one. Now this one, I have not gone through this one, the Genesis process. However, Stephanie and Britton have paid money to go through a training, correct? Yep, to lead groups to go through this and we are planning currently we don't know when it's going to happen but be watching for this this is a great resource i can tell already by the little that i've read in it that this is a great resource for us to dig around our soul and to and to find out if there are any lies that are in our soul and then of course i think of christian counseling you can pay a professional to help dig around in your soul and figure out the lies that you are believing. So those are some great resources that I ran across that helped me in the process of healing from that lie. And, uh, and I wanna, this, I'm pretty sure this is not the only way that you can heal from stuff, but this is, this is what happened to me in the pure desire curriculum, I figured out there was a lie that I was believing, you know, and they take you all the way back, the earliest that you can remember. But it was in this, um, I call it theophostics, but in beyond tolerable recovery, that what we did in that one is, you know, somebody helped me, maybe Jeff, maybe somebody else, but somebody helped me to go back to that, that night that we were chopping wood out there, and it was kind of cold fall evening, and at dusk, and, you know, and they, and they said, you know, go back over, try to feel what you were feeling as a six-year-old, and I'm like, I don't, you know, that sounds kind of kooky, inner child in you, crap, I don't want to do this, but we were doing it, and so I was like, okay, so, I, you know, I wanted to be, I wanted to be free, and so I began to feel what I was feeling as a six-year-old, and I, I didn't cry, you know, I would have, um, but I, you know, it was, it was emotional, and then at some point, they say, okay, now I want you to kind of view what's going on from the top, and I want you to ask the Holy Spirit to show you where Jesus is, so all this is in my imagination. I'm shutting my eyes. I'm back there, say, you know, six years old, chopping wood, double-headed axe, and dad's snapping at me, and I say, Holy Spirit, show me where Jesus is. And I remember this, you know, Jesus, he's all shiny, light Jesus. He's standing right behind me in front of the chopping block, and then he's standing right behind me, behind my brother chopping wood, and then he's standing right behind me when I'm on the side of the chopping block, and then he's holding my hand and walking me through the hall to the house when I was listening to the hurt whisper. And then in that process, the person that was helping me say, okay, now ask the Holy Spirit to, to tell you what was really going on. You know, to have him tell you the truth. And, it, you know, it gets a little emotional, but that's okay because how do we change our operating system? One of two ways, through repetition or emotionally charged input. So I said, Lord Jesus, what was the truth? 
And just like that, Jesus was like, well, the, the truth was your dad's trying to protect you. You're six years old. You shouldn't be swinging a double-headed axe. And something happened. There was a, the, the lie, the old lie got taken off. The new lie got taken on. And I'm, unfortunately, I'm like 30 years old, 31 years old at this time. But my relationship with my dad was better from that time on. And, the, and I was no longer filtering life through the idea that uh, my dad loved my brother better. It was easy for me to believe that God loved other people better than me. But there was an amount of healing that happened on that day. Church, I don't know if you've noticed on the wall somewhere it says growth. There it is right there above the exit sign. And so that's a core value that we have around here. So we say that we're lifelong learners. So, yeah, I don't, I don't really care how old you are. I don't care if you're on cruise control and you're just waiting to cash in your chips. I don't, I don't want to ever put it on cruise control and stop learning. I want us to continue to learn intellectually. I want us to continue to learn spiritually. And I want us to continue to learn in our emotional health. So I would encourage you, what, no matter what age you are, is, you know, spend some time. Ask the Holy Spirit to, to reveal to you if there's any lies that are coming out. I mean, if you have bursts of anger, you know, if you go from like, you know, like a two to, you know, hey, don't do that, all the way to an eight. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't. You know, if you can go from a two to an eight and not go through four, five, six, something's not right. You know, so if there's anger or those other things that I listed, the, the idea of feeling alone when uh, alone or unlovable, uh, those type of things, uh, these are all indicators that uh, there, there are still lies in there that need to be taken off and, and put on new. Because this is the deal. If you want to win in life, and I want to win in life, I hope we all want to win in life, it's, sometimes it takes a little work. Sometimes it takes a little uh, pain. You know, I mean, if you have to relive at a painful event, who wants to do that? I don't. But it's actually the stirring up of those emotions is the time that you get to take off the old and put on the new. So it's inevitable. So it's going to take some work for you to do. And if you continue to work at growing in your life, um, your, your family will be glad that you did and and if you're not if you're not willing to to work to get better then don't complain about being stinky let me pray lord jesus i thank you that you love us right where we're at you couldn't love us any more than where we're at right now but you love us too much to leave us here and so you continue to Help us grow. You continue to convict us by your Holy Spirit. So, Lord, I ask that you help me grow. I hope that you, I help, I pray that you help all of us to grow in whatever area we're supposed to grow in. And we will participate in whatever process that is coming up to, to help us grow in these different areas. While your heads are bowed and your eyes are closed, and I'm talking to the people online also, I just, in that moment, I, I feel like the Holy Spirit is telling me there's some people, and you're just right on the line of making a decision to follow Jesus or not. And I just want to encourage you, this is a great time for you to decide, yes, I, Jesus, I, I'm want you to be my Lord. This is what you say to him. Jesus, I want you to be my Lord. I believe you rose from the dead and, and I decide this day to follow you. And that's what the Lord told me to say right now. And so I believe that there are people that are making that decision. So if you made that decision, if you're making that decision right now, 
you need to let us know so that we can help you, help point you in the right direction of how to be a disciple of Jesus. I ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Stand with me, please. There will be people up front that want to pray for you. If you need prayer for anything, I encourage you to come forward and that we will agree with you in prayer and watch miracles happen. Before you go, I pray that the Lord will bless you and keep you. The Lord will make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. And he'll lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you shalom, shalom. God bless you. We'll see you next week.